let's begin to talk about emerging therapies. Um, I think uh, all of solid tumor oncology, uh, actually even Hodgkin's disease, mm -hmm. uh, we're interested in uh, anti-PD-1, pd one CTLA-4. Uh, what's being done, uh, uh, Katie, in checkpoint inhibitors, phase three trials, checkpoint inhibitors in ovarian cancer? I'm going to better quote Dr. Rob Coleman a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Go no. ahead. So in Frontline, we have uh, what's called GOG 3015, which is the Genentech study that's randomizing patients to a chemotherapy backbone um, and um, using atezolizumab, which is an anti-PD-1, as a maintenance with, or with, uh, with bevacizumab. So it's looking at this question of does combining um, uh, uh, a checkpoint inhibitor with an anti-angiogenic strategy improve outcomes, and the rationale for that is that we think you increase T cell infiltration of the tumors by stabilizing the vessels. Primary so actually, debulking, interval debulking, all right. comers. It's um, it's not all comers. It's looking at a little bit of a higher risk population. It has a neoadjuvant cohort, and it has a primary cytoreduction cohort. But you can't be a like no gross residual no, no zeros, patient right. because some of those mm. patients take a long time to recur. Fortunately, fortunately, and this is this is more focused mm -hmm. for the economy of the study. Correct. And now the. I'm just asking devil's advocate. The study was appropriately powered because if you look at the single agent activity of immune checkpoint inhibition of ovarian cancer, all data show like a 10% response rate. Not high. Rate. Not high. So you're using a drug in an unselected manner. Uh, are you able to gonna tweak out that group that really has a significant improvement? Yes. Uh, well, I, th I believe... And do you think it's going to apply to all patients? I think that we are going to get some really good information mm -hmm. on it because the neoadjuvant cohort mm -hmm. actually has planned, and the patients will have to consent, mm -hmm. um, but it's a paired biopsy samples. Interesting, yeah. Um, and there's a pretty elaborate translational science component added to that study. So there could be some midterm analysis of the neoadjuvant component where you could sort of yeah. amend and, the and protocol and according to what you... And, and I think get. that's, that's mm -hmm. really important because, um, yeah. you know, we know so little about what actually happens uh, with right. respect to the T cell infiltration, um, and the and the na character and the and their and their relative spatial homology to the tumor. Those are all like really critical pieces to understand from this. And actually, just uh, we have a similar kind of a dual approach to this in our in our center, where we're giving um, we have two neoadjuvant chemotherapy trials. One is using just chemo as the induction surgery and then followed by uh, chemo IO. In this case, it was pembrolizumab, followed by pembro maintenance. And then the other is to look at uh, chemotherapy plus an IO surgery and then chemotherapy IO followed by IO. And then that durvalumab was, is that particular. But the idea is to compare the pre and post tissue to see right. what happens under those two stresses. Mm -hmm. So you know, I like to simplify things because my mind is simple. So oh, I, sure. I think that the predictors probably <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, of response to checkpoints are probably tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, neoantigen load, and maybe pdl one expression. Maybe. So, yeah. so if you look at ovarian cancer, TILs are only present, if you remember the cuco is about 55%, mm -hmm. okay? Neoantigen load is also pretty low. So the mm -hmm. idea of adding chemotherapy to checkpoint is to increase the neoantigen load. Correct. We're fortunate that PDL1 expression is generally pretty common, more 70 to 75%. Mm -hmm. So that's why all five randomized phase three trials have chemotherapy with the checkpoint. So you talked about what I call Imagine 50, you call it GOG. 3015, but it is Imagine 50, you're correct. And then, and then there are other two more Atezolizumab trials, one adding it to the Aurelia regimen, mm -hmm. again, chemotherapy BEV, and one Adelante, mm -hmm. adding it to the platinum-sensitive mm. backbone. Right. Again, all with BEV because it's the same manufacturer. And then there's a Velimab. The Javelin series. The Javelin series. So right. the Javelin series is frontline and a platinum-resistant. Mm -hmm. And in the platinum-resistant space, it adds it with PLD. Mm -hmm. And that study is completed enrollment. Amazing. The last month of that study, they put over 80 patients in a month. It's no doubt it's popular. I mean, it's popular. It's popular. But you know, and I, the thing is, is that I, I like that trial a lot because of the Thank potential you. that. Thank you. I don't know who wrote it, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, and, and but thank but, you to Eric Pujol. Yeah, absolutely, our international collaborators. The the uh, the role of the of PLD in this setting is, is is a commonly used agent to potentially induce a response for immunotherapy. So um, immunogenic cell death. I yeah, love that. it's it's so so it's a nice study, you know. And, and what I like about all of these is that they're at least attempting 
to to bank on the what we know about the biology, and they'll tell us what the new biology is. Right. And the TR with Javelin 100, which is a front line. Yeah. See, the challenge the challenge is that we really don't know what the safety is of checkpoint and surgery. So in, right. so in Javelin right. 100, there's three arms, mm -hmm. and one arm is just maintenance. Yeah, yeah. Because throwing into this interval debulking and all of this stuff may ruin that arm. It may not be feasible. Right, right. It may increase toxicity. So Javelin 100 has as a safety net, if you will, a, just a maintenance phase. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point, and, in, and I think we'll see how the studies kind of bear out, but we do have data from lung oh, no question. where they are getting thoracic resections, which is not like a big abdominal surgery, but, right. but it's, it's still, not a minor it's procedure. It's a surgical and it's, stress. And it's really been yeah. shown to be a safe combination kind Correct. of in that setting. And yeah. so I, um, I think we're gonna get a lot of information about efficacy and safety and hopefully um, biomarkers.